Hey guys, time for the second video in the second video blog from Korea. And I promised you guys that I would take you to a tour and give you a bit of a view of the new apartment and just show you how big they are exactly in Korea and where I now live. Um, I have to postpone that a little bit because I was a little bit more busy this week than I originally anticipated. But I thought, okay, I would at least throw in another video and deal with a few of the questions that you guys ask in the YouTube comments. And one of the things that I always get asked on Twitter, on Facebook and also on YouTube is how good my Korean is these days. And uh, well, I've been in Korea for right now one year and I have to admit that my Korean is still pretty bad. I mean, it's very, very basic. I can order things in a restaurant and I can get around a little bit, but I'm not really happy with it. When I originally came to Korea, I really wanted to learn Korean as fast as possible. And I even took classes at university, tried to just make sure that after a year or two, I would be in a position where I could speak the language somewhat fluently. Turned out to be a little bit more difficult than I originally uh, thought it would be, because one of the main problems that you have is um, you have to completely relearn reading and writing. Korean has a completely different alphabet and a, a very, very different grammar. Everything is completely upside down from uh, the European languages. And in school I had to learn French, at university I had to learn Spanish. And to be completely honest with you, both languages I don't really speak anymore. I still understand French if people speak to each other and I uh, listen very carefully, then I can grasp what it's all about and I feel if I would have to live in France at some point in time I could probably pick up the language again quite easily. Same goes for Spanish even though I never really put as much effort into learning Spanish as I did in to learning French. But if you compare it to learning Korean it's completely different and as I already mentioned learning to read and write again is one of the biggest problems. So you kind of start with um, learning the Korean alphabet and even if you know how to pronounce everything, at this point I'm really pretty decent at reading and writing Korean, but I'm very, very slow. And up to the point where you get kind of fast, it's very difficult to actually uh, learn the language in my opinion, or to learn it properly. You can of course always pick up sounds and ask a friend how you pronounce a certain word or you can just ask him, okay, if I want to say where do I have to go or how much is this, what do I have to say, what's the words for that. But if you really want to learn it properly, then you also have to learn how to write it, in my opinion. That's at least how I learned. How I learned French, how I learned uh, Spanish, how I learned English. So that's one of the biggest problems. And in the beginning, what I wanted to do was just to go to university and take a few courses. And I actually took two classes. But the big problem for me was that it was very, very difficult for me to uh, actually put in all the time. So. I went to university and uh, they expected you to uh, just learn after university as well. At that time I was casting a lot for the GSL, I was casting a lot of Euro European tournaments at night and so that was pretty stressful for me. I learned how to read and how to write and I learned the basics of the grammar but the way that they teach you at university is very, I would say, difficult to, uh, um, to use in your daily life. You can picture it like learning a language, a new language at school. You can't really use it at the beginning, so it doesn't really matter what they teach you. And it's not very practical. They teach you about, I don't know, the zoo, about certain animals, and they make up make-believe stories to give you a topic that you can talk about. But that doesn't really help me in my daily life. So when I'm uh, buying something or when I'm just meeting people, then I can't really use all these words, which means that I don't have the practice to uh, and the practice that you need and I can't repeat all that on a regular basis. So that was one of the biggest issues that I had with learning at the university and at that point I kind of decided that's not really the best way to approach the, um, the whole issue. So I tried to look up a few podcasts, try to uh, take also private lessons and the podcasts that you can find online are usually crap. They're really bad. I found a lot. I tried Rosetta Stone as well, but it's very vocabulary based. It's not really practical in daily life either. It can, it can help you though. It's not really bad. But in, if you just look at podcasts, what you usually find is pretty tough to deal with. It doesn't really help you a lot. The one thing that I found which is really, really amazing and uh, right now I put most of my time into uh, watching those podcasts and reading through the uh, PDFs that they provide as well is if you call, uh, go to uh, talktomeinkorean.com, a lot of you might already have heard of it. It's an amazing website and I was really blown away when I realized that even though the quality of the podcasts is really high, that they have every, they provide everything for free, like everything. You, they even had to close down the donations because I downloaded a lot of them and I went through the first few lessons 
and I realized this is really really good so I looked up where I could donate some uh, some money because I really appreciated it and it was much better than most of the classes at university that, that I took so I'm like if I have to spend money at a university class and uh, now suddenly I find out that these podcasts are maybe a little bit slower and uh, give me everything in smaller por- uh, portions but are much better for me to, to learn with, I might as well donate some money to the guys because you can really, really see that they put a lot of effort into it. But then uh, I realized that they shut the, they cut the donations off for some reason. There was no system anymore. I think it has to do with the Korean taxes, but I'm not 100% sure. So they offer like packages where you can uh, um, buy vocabulary uh, things or books. So I did that. Like, I think in the FHQ they mentioned that if someone wants to support them, that's the way to go. To go. So if you really want to have a quick glance at Korean and want to learn a little bit, go to talk to me in Korean.com. That's definitely an awesome website. That's what I'm currently doing. And I think I'm getting a lot better these days. My Korean is still bad and it's still a bit problematic for me to communicate with people. I can't pick up on conversations. I, As I mentioned before, I get along, I can order food, I can ask for how much money it is, I can count and yeah, the basic stuff basically. So I'm not helpless in Korea, but it could be a lot better and that's why I am currently putting in a lot more time to learn Korean. I will of course update you um, how that goes. But one of the misconceptions that a lot of people have is that in Korea you have a lot to do with Koreans, like you talk to um, to Koreans all the time and that you therefore can practice the language. That's actually not really true. Like all the people that I talk to have a really good English, so I don't have to talk in Korean at all. And that's really, really a big problem. That was one of the big issues that I had the entire time that I couldn't really practice Korean, that everyone was talking English and it was much more convenient for me to just keep talking to them in English because my Korean is so bad and uh, I can't really make these complicated sentences that I have to go to sometimes when I talk to them and when I want to know something about a certain topic. So we usually talk in English and up to the point where my Korean is um, at least kind of conversational, I feel that's going to stay that way. So right now I'm a bit on my own. I'm trying to learn Korean through all these podcasts. I'm trying to improve. My goal for 2013 is to get a lot better. But at this point, it's really a lot more difficult to learn the language for the reasons mentioned um, than you guys might think. It's not like just picking up another Roman language. It's much more difficult, especially because of the reading and writing. I think that concludes it for today. Once again, if you have questions, let me know on YouTube, write in the comments. You can send me a tweet on Twitter at Caldor. And yeah, at the same time, if there's anything else that you want to know, always feel free to ask. I will make sure that you guys get a glimpse of the apartment and a tour within the next few days, hopefully the next week. On Sunday, I am flying to Germany for three weeks. I go to the Iron Square tournament, as already mentioned, but I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to upload another video before that. At least I'll try. That's it for today. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.